let me just see by a show of hand, how many of us are here and uh, you are 50 years and above? Like me. A bit to mama to pick you my coffee. Yeah. Yeah, able to pick my coffee, yeah. yeah? Amen, thank you very much. God bless you. How many of you, please be seated. How many of you are here and uh, in fourth floor? You're in your 40s. All right, wonderful. Let's have, let's have to my coffee, come on, Ilya. All right, thank you, God bless you. How many of you are here and you are in your 30s? Okay, wonderful. God bless, I'm born to have to my coffee, Missouri. All right, thank you very much. In fact, even our senior pastor is in that category. We need now, let's give them how many factorials? Who knows factorials? Three factorials. Uh -huh. Three factorials. Good, thank you very much. How many of you are here and you are just about to go into 30? You are still on the second floor. Yeah, yeah, right. Thank you. Ah, yeah, at our pair two factorials. God bless you. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here today. And um, I don't know where to start. The Reverend Sarah gave me a very interesting topic, flourishing in your singlehood. And I really, no, so I had so many things that I could say uh, about flourishing in your singlehood. And so I actually uh, chose to, to really bring it down and, uh, and decided that I'm going just to narrow it down on uh, one specific thing that is at the heart of my heart and which I think if you get it right, then you will flourish in all the seasons of life. And uh, I chose to come and share with you on um, flourishing in your season by embracing a purposeful living. I'm narrowing, you know, so I'm just narrowing it down. And the reason I'm, I thought of that is that, um, uh, as, as Reverend Sarah has already said, this is a season. And for some of us, it's a season that will end. And for some of us, it's a season that will live until the end of life. <laughs> are we together? Are we together? Yes. Or are we together? Yes. All right. I need to talk to me now. Yes. Right? Yes. Okay. So I, I just kind of narrowed it down to that point. Flourishing in your season by embracing a purposeful living. And as we think about that, our stories, uh, someone, Peter Shepherd, once said, it's becoming increasingly apparent that knowing and living one's life purpose is the most crucial step forward in any individual's path of development. That statement right there is therefore then saying, even in your stage right now as single, the most crucial thing you need to do, the most crucial thing that you need to embrace is actually knowing your life purpose. Now, when you know your life purpose, then whether you are single or married, you will actually flourish. Praise the Lord. Are we together? Yes. And our life is a function of the goals we choose to pursue, while a purpose is a conscious, and I, I, I like that word, a conscious, intentional goal chosen and pursued for a desired outcome. Now, that's then when you're talking about, that's why, in fact, that's the reason I chose this, is that when you're talking about flourishing in your singlehood, then we are actually saying, what is this one conscious thing you're going to do? What is this one intentional thing you're going to do? What is this thing you're going to choose to pursue so that you actually have an, a desired outcome? So when you're talking about flourishing in our singlehood, then you're talking about what is it? Because again, sometimes 
We have, when you talk about uh, topics like this, we come and say seven principles of flourishing. <laughs> seven, ten principles of, of, of what? Uh, ten principles of success. Now, you actually discover that many times and we have come up with principles and principles and everything, but I can tell you for sure, even if I gave you 21 or 121 pap principles of how to thrive in your singlehood, you will not make it until, mm -hmm, until you yourself <laughs> consciously and intentionally choose to pursue a particular path with a particular outcome in your mind. And as this is where I want to go. This is where I'm headed to. This is what I want to achieve. This is what I want to be known for. Unless you do that, you will not flourish. Praise be to God. Whether you are single or you are not. Unless you consciously do that. And therefore, at whatever stage of life you are at, now and in the future, you won't be able to flourish until you connect into God's defined purpose for that season. And that's why I was also thinking about, move the next slide, uh, when I'm asking about at what stage are we at? And I want to say those of us who uh, today actually we are living in better times as single people. <laughs> you are living in a better time. In the days of my mother, if as a lady you reach 20 years and you're not married, <laughs> it was disaster. The aunties will be called, the angles will be called, at 20, yeah, 20 years, my Lord. <laughs> and if possible, they will also go to some witch doctors to find out what has bewitched you. That's why many of you who are here, you discover if you are a firstborn, by the time you are born, your mother was still a teenager. Am I speaking to someone? Yeah. I'm a third born in my family, and by the time I was born, my, father, my mother was only 21 years. Yes, only 21 years. I, I was a third born. So now I'm thinking I'm old, but when we walk around with my mother, we look like brother and sister. <laughs> You understand? Then came to our time now when we were young, the, the kind of people start, when you are now uh, 30, I, I said, what is wrong? <laughs> and, the, and, 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 and people will be sent to you. In fact, in the olden days, the aunties will be sent, even to the boys, just to test whether you are normal. Yeah. In, in other words, singlehood was not something that people even accepted. But also those days were also somehow in those days, I think they're also doing that because like they expected you, know, you to go. With time, we have now started, because now in our time, when I was getting married, when you get to 30 and you're not it's like, hey, hey, bro, is there something wrong with you? Then they discover there's nothing wrong. Right now, we are okay. Before 30 years ago, even churches will never appoint a single person as a pastor. <laughs> Leave alone a single lady, a single person. Even 30 years ago, even the community will not elect you to be a member of parliament if you are not married. Did you, re any of you who is in 50, you remember? So it was harder. That's why I just want to say that it was harder those days for someone to be single than it is today. 
And therefore, then when you think about that flourishing in our time, in our singlehood in this time, I want to say we have a better chance to flourish as singles in our time than those who are single in the years past. That's the point I'm making. Are we together? Are we together? So you have no choice not to flourish. Because your environment, although some of you still feel like the environment is not very good, because those questions still ask, people look at you, they think there's something wrong with you. <laughs> but sometimes there is something wrong with them. You understand? Because the, 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 the Google, the, 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 the classes they have, but we are living in a better season for a single person to actually flourish. If you are doubting me, you ask Pastor Sarah. Imagine she's a pastor in Sitam, senior pastor. Bwana Swesan. Kwani tu amezuiwa? Alafu tunakaa unajua I'm still single. What if you remain single the rest of your life? Will you not proceed? Ukae hapo hapo? Are we together? So I just wanted to get there to actually that point just to remember that at whatever stage you are at, you can only flourish until you connect into God's defined purpose for that season. And you missed a place to say amen. amen. <laughs> the meaning of your life is determined by the choices you make and the effort you exert. The meaning of your life is not going to be decided by what, by what people think about you. It's not going to be decided by your great grandman or your grandmother or your mother or your society. The meaning of your life is going to be determined by the choices you make as an individual. And it's at this point sometimes I make, I really respect, I know some of you who are here and you are single parents. Um, are there any single parents? And mostly they are single mothers, right? <laughs> the pastor said single, single parents, right? I, you know, I, I have really come to respect this, especially single mothers. You know, some of them are single mothers not because they wanted to. They are single mothers because someone somehow put them in that path, then they disappeared. And the reason today we have many single mothers in our society is because there are very many irresponsible fathers. <laughs> and I've had an opportunity to talk to single, single parents and particularly single mothers and they have interesting stories. There's some people who are single mothers and they are single mothers and have decided to remain single the rest of their lives because by the time they got pregnant, this guy looked at them and said, flash that thing. And then they chose not to and keep that baby. For that, the society look at them and say, oh, <laughs> single mothers. For them, they made a choice to keep a life. They make a choice not to kill, but to keep a life. And so, Whatever comes of your life is actually going to be determined by the choices you make. You yourself. It's not about the choices the society makes for you, but the choices you make for yourself. That's important. That you need to consciously tell yourself, even if I remain by the way, let me ask, how many of us are here and you have decided, me, I'm single forever? Like, I have made up my mind. Yeah, we have some of us right there. How many of us are single and searching? Uh -uh. Yeah, you are searching. You have hope. You are praying, right? Just lift up your hand. Let me see. Oh, a majority of you are single and... Searching. Let's appreciate them. They are searching. <laughs> now, whether you have made a decision to be single, and just like Paul, for instance, Paul made a decision to be single, and he served the Lord in such a powerful way, 
when you read the New Testament, there is, apart from Jesus Christ, there is no other person that teaches about marriage better than Paul. But he was single. <laughs> so you can choose. But what we are make, what you are saying here, that even if you choose and you are saying, hata vile miaka yangu mahali imefikia sasa, wacha nikae hivi ni mtumikie Mungu mpaka mwisho wa maisha yangu. Whatever that decision you make, the choices you make will determine whether you flourish or not flourish. For those of you who are single and searching, even the, whether you actually succeed in your search, <laughs> when I sana, is also going to be determined by the decisions and the choices you make. When I sana. And that's important. Am I talking to someone? And therefore, whether one's life is meaningful or meaningless depends on whether or not one chooses to be rational and purposeful. So you actually can choose to flourish or not to flourish. Let me just say this, that God created us for a purpose. And that purpose is not negated or nullified because we are single. That purpose of God still remains. Acts chapter 17, verse 26. What does the Bible say? From one man he made every nation of men that they should inhabit the whole earth and he determined the times set for them. For in him we live and move and have our being. Hallelujah. Uh, can you read that? Is it, is it possible to read it together? Can you see? Can we read that together? Ngoja, ngoja. I think you are old, but you can read like we do in Sunday school. Hallelujah. Okay, can we start together from one man? The verse 28 there is very critical for us to realize that for in Christ we live and move and have our being. <laughs> so even at this stage of singlehood, if you are, whether you are going to flourish in this time and in this season that God has placed you in is determined by whether you are going to be in Christ. Because in him we live, in him we move, in him we have our being. Hallelujah. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen? And therefore, I want to request, therefore, that if we are going to flourish in our singlehood, that we get to plug into the God's purpose, the God being. When he says we have in him we live, in him we walk, and in him we have our being. So how do we plug into this being? That's what I want to address now in depth. And then I will be done. Or if I'm not done, I'll be out of your way. I'll do one of those two things. I will either be done or it will get to a time when I just have to get out of your way. Praise be to God. So I want to say a few things. How to connect into the God being purpose. And that God being, I'm taking it from the, the, the scripture we've read in verse 28, that in him we have our being. How do we plug into this God being purpose? Uh, recently, I have been serving as a pastor at Sitam. Where, which Sitam now? Hey, okay, Hembakasi. <laughs> and um, before, in At River, we just used to preach. So in fact, sometimes you just preach without points. You just say many things, and God, everyone picks what God is speaking to them. And then when I came to Mbakasi, I discovered they only say three points. And I really struggled to say three points. Because, you know, as you, as you may be realizing now that I'm just, I, I, don't, I, I, I don't preach, I just talk. So I'm just talking. 
So I really struggled. So I came up with a strategy that uh, because they are used to three things. So if I was going to say five points, I would say, I want to give you three things, then plus two things. <laughs> then I'll be out of your way. So today I want to say three things. And then say another three things. Then finish with another three things. And the reason I want, uh, one thing I discovered that sometimes when you just say a few things, somehow some people may not, may not connect. So I might say those nine things, but it's only one thing that will connect with you. So all these other things might be unnecessary. Maybe just like pastors, you have finished preaching. No, I am not. There is someone else whose thing is coming. Praise be to God. So you, I may say so many things and you're like, I think pastor just said one point. No, I, I, that one point was for you. The other one was for the other person. But if I say nine things and you leave this place without something for yourself, then you should actually not have come. <laughs> when I say sad. So three, nine, three things, another three things, and I finish with three things. Amen. Number one, seek to know God, know what he expects of you, and do it. Uh -huh. Seek to know God, know what he expects of you, and do what? And do it. That's the starting point of flourishing. That's the starting point of you achieving anything in life. That's the starting point of you making an impact even in your singlehood. To know God. To know what he expects of you. And then to do it. And the scripture says in Acts chapter 13 verse 36. That after David had served God in his own generation. What happened? He died. But the point that the scripture makes in Acts 13, 36 is that David served the Lord's purposes in his generation. Now the issue, if you are going to flourish, then you must come to a point and ask, what is the purpose of God? What is the purpose that God has created me? Why am I existing now? Why am I even single in this time? That when you realize that and seek to know God's purpose in your life and know what God expects of you and do it, you will actually just flourish. Buena Suesan. Hallelujah. You will succeed. You will succeed in life. You will succeed in what you do. You will succeed in touching other people's lives and actually changing lives. If you know God, know what he expects of you and do what he expects of you. And then sometimes we struggle because we were like, what is, what is the society expecting of us? What, what is my people, what is my family expecting of us? I can tell you the society can put so much expectations on you. The family can put so much on you. Even the church can put some, a, lot of, a, a lot of stuff on you and expectations on you. But I am here to declare to you, your success, your flourishing, and your fruitfulness in your singlehood will start by you knowing God. Hallelujah. Are we together? Know what he expects of you and do it. Because sometimes we see we can know God. We can even know what he expects of us, but we are not doing it. Say, oh, you know, you know, you know, I'm just, but, hey, I'm just, but, uh, uh, what's your story? <laughs> if you know what God expects you to do, my sister, just do it. My brother, if you know what God expects you to do, just do it. And then you will flourish. Praise be to God. The second, if you, and one of, the reason I want you to take that very seriously is this. That if you die today, and you went to stand before the judgment seat. I am almost convinced, although it may not be theological, but I think I am convinced 
That one question that God won't ask you is why aren't you married? Are, are we together? He won't ask you where's your husband. He won't ask you where's your wife. You know why? Even those of us who are married, when you go to heaven, you just go alone. Yeah. You know there are no husbands in heaven. That's why if you're looking for a husband, look for him now, here. <laughs> there are no husbands. And there are people who are married. A husband will go to heaven and the wife will go to hell. Or a wife will go to heaven and the husband will go to hell. Sasa hii maneno tunafanya tunachochocha nayo ni hapa tu tatabure. Oh my wife. Oh my husband. Hey. Imagine to get to heaven na wako. So that's the reason you need to live your life knowing Right now, in this season, you are so complete and God expects you to do whatever he has created you for even without a husband and without a wife. Hey, come on. Are we together? If the husband comes, let him come. Why? Finding you doing the purposes of God. If a wife comes, let her come. Finding you doing the purposes of God. But are we together? And that's so important. You will only account for what you did or did not do in your situation. So you are not going to heaven and telling God, <laughs> you, know, you know, Papa, I was single, that's why I did not do this. No. Because you have all it takes to do that which God expects of you in your season of your life. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Second thing I want to say is build supportive relationships. Build supportive relationships. Beyond pursuing the purposes of God, pursue or build supportive relationships. And let me say singlehood is not self-imprisonment and is not self-containment. You need to build mutually supportive relationships. You know, some of us are so single and we remain so single. <laughs> Mbaka every time, don't disturb. Don't disturb. Don't disturb. Even now, when Pastor Sarah was saying, please move, some of you are feeling like, you know, I, I'm already comfortable here. Men and women of God, singlehood requires that we build supportive relationships. When you read the book of Esther, and we will not want to read that, but when Esther is faced with this situation where she needs to pray, you realize that even before she became queen, she had built relationships. And even as queen, she was building relationships. That's where she could tell people, me, I will gather some people around and ask them to pray with me, and they will come and pray. One of the things I ask you even as a single person, are you, do you have a people that you can comfortably pray together, comfortably share life together, or you are just by yourself? If you are just by yourself, you need to do something. And I know that in church sometimes we have couples fellowships, we have you know, all these fellowships, but as single people, that's why we are bringing you together. And even just allow you to mingle together, encourage each other together, and support each other. One as first hand. So again, I know you left behind so many other single brethren. Please encourage them that when you come here, we mingle, we talk, and that's how life is should be. One as first hand. Do, please do not take this stage as self imprisonment or self containment. Say, you know, Mimi. I am single and satisfied. Yes, you are satisfied, my sister. But even in your satisfaction, you need people. You need others 
who are equally satisfied as you are, or those who may need support to be satisfied to get where you are? Uh, am I speaking to someone? Yes. yes. Thank you, my brother. Uh, my brother there was, was encouraging me very much. Hallelujah. <laughs> so we need to build supportive relationships. And, even, and, and it's important, for instance, just imagine even in your community, even if your community looks at singles as if there are people who cannot do anything and you came together as single ladies and you do a project in the village, you minister to, 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 you minister to orphans in the village, they will take notes and they will appreciate you for what you are doing. Hallelujah. So let's do something. Let's be supportive. Let's come together and do something together. The third thing I want to say that will help you to build, uh, to grow in the purpose of God is take or accept responsibility. Ah, I didn't hear an amen. Amen. Yes, my brother. Thank you. <laughs> hey, what's the name of that, that preacher man? <laughs> hey? He's really encouraging me right there. Accept responsibility. One of the things that happens in singlehood sometimes is for us to run away from our problems or sometimes to blame it all to others except ourselves. And this is not by any means to judge anyone. But it's important for us to get to a point and realize that if at some particular point you have to take responsibility for the situation you are in, please do not run away from your situation. Do not stop and stop blaming others. And I think I ever mentioned something here. One of the issues we need to deal with, Pastor Bwire, is about single men who run away from, not even their problems, from the situations they have created. <laughs> I remember one time talking to my brother. My brother, you know, in every family you have these, these guys who, who just behave in a manner and you're like, you know, things happen. So at some point we, we, we were pushing, you know, as family we were pushing him to get married. <laughs> my friend, you need to get married. Then he was like saying, uh, I'm not ready. The guy is 30, 35. He's not ready to get married. Now, that's, that was not a problem. The problem is, almost every other year or two, kuna mtu analeta mtoto to my mother's house. You know? You ah. So Mama after two weeks and say my Meisha. Una shindo kwani Meisha aji. Sasa unaenda nyumbani unapata grandchildren and you know I love women. Oh women, let's appreciate women and particularly grandmothers. Oh my goodness, my mother, my mother can welcome anyone and anybody in the home. So sukari na peleka inaisha tu arak. You know the things that happen in the village. Mama Zimunajua. Wakati peleka mtoto sema pelekea nyanya yake. So now we are asking this guy. No, if you don't want to get married, then you stop behaving like you are married. Why do you are not ready for marriage and yet you want to do the things that married people do? That's not acceptable. <laughs> yeah. It's, amen, my sister. Amen. It's not acceptable. Even if you are here, you are choosing and you say, I am, I am single and satisfied. Then please don't do the things that married people should be doing. Ukai to you. So this young man, we ask him. So we ask him now, please tell us, 
Sasa wewe uko kweli uko na watoto wangapi? <laughs> Then you know what he told us? Uh, wale wanachulikana ni tisa. <laughs> <laughs> wale wanachulikana ni tisa with seven different women and the guy doesn't want to get married ah. so this is a man who is running away from responsibility But adventure you've gone through a situation and you need to own up just own up. Bana siwe. And we should stop blaming others. This one thing that sometimes helps us and when you get to a point particularly for instance like those of us and I appreciate those of you who are here single parents you walk through that journey you get to a point and you begin owning that journey and you're saying I am going to walk this and i'm going i made a decision and i'm going to walk this and i'm not blaming anyone i am in this and walk and when you begin just stopping to point fingers the blessings of god begins to come your way now this is very prophetic you need to say amen to that amen. when you stop blaming others when you stop us waiting for others when you stop looking at others as evil and you are good And then say you know Lord I am in this and I want to walk with you show me your purpose show me what you want me to do in this season I can tell you will flourish you will flourish you will succeed and you prosper in Jesus name we should stop the blame game I will not tell you about that but let's move to number four. number four, be authentic be what just be authentic know who you are you know sometimes we we kind of pretend we kind of out here we don't show for who we truly are and sometimes we confuse people <laughs> just be authentic know who you are Do not bow to the pressures of others be real praise be to God now when you are real and you do not bow to the pressure of others you will actually flourish yani unajijua bwana asifiwe sana unajijua na even when in your search if you are searching or being searched if you are authentic you know the kind of person you will say yes to and the kind of person that you will not You will not entertain yes pastor bwana sifezan you know and if you are not like some of you now when you get to relationships those of you who are below 30 and you are searching just talk to some of these people who are in their 40s in their 50s or talk to your mother i know sometimes you don't like talking to your mothers your mother can look at a gentleman especially ladies your mother can look at a gentleman like this and he, she will tell you if this gentleman can make a good husband or a devil kind of husband the problem is sometimes we don't want to listen to them you know your mother has lived with your father for many years <laughs> and some of you know how your fathers are very troublesome a terror to live with but they have managed and tell you But the point I'm making here is do not act just be real. Do not pretend. Do not show to be the kind of person that you are not. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. And I know that sometimes like even now in this world and like especially in our age there is a temptation to begin living like others. Just live your life. Live as the kind of person you are and you will actually succeed. you will be fruitful you will prosper you will flourish in whatever you do in this season and in the seasons to come you know when you are real and i like daniel you read the book of daniel chapter 3 the story of shadrach meshach and abednego and there's something i want just to pick up from there the traitor says shadrach meshach and abednego replied to the king 
O Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown in the blessing furnace, the God we serve is able to save us from it, and he will rescue us from your hand, O king. But even if he does not, <laughs> we want you to know, O king, that you will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. These young men had actually exemplified themselves. That's why they were serving in the king's palace. But they had raised up a standard for themselves, a standard that they were not going just to put down to, even if a degree is offered by the king. Amen. Now, that's how you need to know, my ladies and my brothers, that you need to get to a level in your age, get to a standard, hallelujah, Although don't set up standards that are beyond, even beyond you and beyond this world. You know, sometimes we live like we are angels, yet we are not. But we want to set up some standards that you are know some principles, and particularly based on the point number one, knowing God and knowing what he expects of you. And that you make a stand that you cannot bow to, even if a millionaire or a billionaire came your way and wanted to take you home for a wife. Uh, hallelujah. Amen. Set your standard. Be authentic. Let people respect you for who you are and what you stand for, and you will actually succeed. Someone said this as an anonymous quote I read somewhere, and he says, it takes a strong person to remain single in a world that is accustomed to settling with anything just to say they have something. <laughs> Oh, media team, you, I wish you project that. I, I think this, this is one of those things you take home. Even if you didn't take home any of my nine points, I think you can take home that quote. I think the projection has a problem. Let me read it again. It says, it takes a strong person, and I, I want to put my own one there, authentic person, to remain single, in a world that is accustomed to settling with anything just to say they have something. I repeat, I, the third time, <laughs> and the last one. Ah, is there a connection problem there or here? Okay. Sawa, just let, let, let it just be. It's okay, media team, thank you for the effort. So, it, and I say this again, it takes a strong person, and I add my own word there, authentic person, to remain single in a world that is accustomed to settling with anything just to say they have something. There are, there are people today, a lot of people, who are in a kind of little hell here on earth in their marriages because they, they were not supposed to marry that person they are married to. Not that they were not supposed to be married, but they were under so much pressure <laughs> that when that guy came, they said, yes, 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 yes. Right now is hell. We will want to give you pressure. And I also, want, I also give people pressure. By the way, those of you who are searching, I encourage you to keep searching. And when you find, I, can, I want to assure you the wedding certificate is available. Hallelujah. But do not search in desperation. Are we together? Do not become so desperate. Be authentic. And you will succeed. Number five. Keep moving forward. Hallelujah. I like this. Keep moving forward. Some of us here are quite stagnant. 
It's like you are waiting till you get married before you start investing or you start doing ABC. You start doing what? What if you don't get married at all? And God has blessed you with money. What are you doing with your money? Hati nangoja, nikipata buwana, nikipata watoto, nikipata muke. What if she doesn't come, my brother? So if you are going to flourish in your singlehood in this state, in this stage, in this season, tell yourself, I must keep moving forward. Hallelujah. Keep moving forward. I said keep moving Life is going on. Life must go on. If God has blessed you with money, invest. Start investing. Buy a plot. Build houses. Be a landlady. If you can't get to, get to be a wife, be a landlady. <laughs> At least people will call you a <laughs> lady. Hallelujah. Bwana sasa ukifika sehemu mkubwa amefika. Hallelujah. Why? Because you are moving forward. Because the reason you need to do this is that God is going to put you to account for the years and the resources he has given to you even as a single person. I know when you get married the responsibilities increase. But even before that there is what God has given you. What are you doing with it? Please do not be stagnant. You are growing old. <laughs> hey, when I say, I know ladies don't like that. But you are growing old. And no one is growing younger. And I keep telling young people when they sometimes tell me, hey, Pasi, who may beat? <laughs> you know how I encourage myself? I tell them, <laughs> thank you. But no one is growing younger. Even you, even if you are 25 years, you are 25 years old. <laughs> you understand? Yes. Even, even my preacher man, my, my encourager there, how old is he? He is three years old. So time is not waiting for us. No time is waiting for you because you are single. No. Time is moving on. And the, and the kind of, the, the, what, is it, what can I say? The journey towards our eternity is not stopping because you are single. We are still moving forward. The time frame and the eternal program of God continues. Whether you are single or married, the time frame of God, the program of God is going on. And you must tell yourself, even if I am in this state, I must keep moving. Keep moving forward. I know that some of you were made single by fire. Uli <laughs> chezwa. Ukapangwa hadi ukapangikwa. Na kwa sababu sasa ulipangwa ukapangikwa vile wahenga wanasema ukishikwa shikamana. You must move on. Hallelujah. Focus on growth and improvement. Stop living in the past. Stop living in the past. Just move on. Particularly those of you who are single parents, do not stop moving on. And stop living in the past. And just move on. Amen. Even if you think it has been difficult, can I tell you the story about Joseph? Joseph, in the book of Genesis chapter 37, verse 19 and 20, he is a dreamer. And I can tell you for some of you, William Mechezwa, you feel like your dreams were shattered. But look at Joseph. In Genesis chapter 37, verse 19 to 20, the Bible says, here comes that dreamer, they say to each other. Come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of these cisterns and say that a ferocious animal defiled him. 
Then we will see what comes of his dreams. And they sold off Joseph to Egypt. They thought they had shattered his dreams. Just like where you are at sometimes you feel like your dreams have been shattered. But wait until you get to Genesis chapter 45. When you get to Genesis chapter 45, verse 7 and 8, <laughs> this is Joseph the dreamer, whom they sold off, almost killed. This is him speaking now. Verse 7, But God sent me ahead of you <laughs> to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So then it was not you who sent me here, but God. He made me father to Pharaoh. Lord, he made me father to Pharaoh, Lord of his entire household and ruler of all Egypt. Can I speak to some of you here who are single parents? Someone thought he had shattered your dream, but I can tell you if you stop living in the past and focus on growth, years are coming, days are coming. When that man... Hey, hey, my goodness. When that man who threw you out of his house, <laughs> will be crying to you. Please just allow me to come to his wedding. Just allow me to come to my daughter's wedding. Please just allow me. Allow me also to come and receive my daughter from the airport. Uh -uh, yeah. Hey, my sister is saying, no way. Hey, <laughs> may the Lord forgive you, my sister. <laughs> I know how you, <laughs> no way, no, 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 no. It is God who is at work in you. Is God doing something in you? Is God flourishing you? Is God making you to prosper? Is God increasing you? Is God who is lifting you up? So those who thought they have killed your dream. In the future, uh, they will be like Joseph's brothers. And God, you thought you, you know, <laughs> you meant it for evil. But God meant it for good. To deliver the nations of the world through me. Amen. Hallelujah. The point is, keep moving forward. Hallelujah. Someone said this. Hope for love. Pray for love. Wish for love. Dream for love. <laughs> but don't put your life on hold waiting for love. Oh, I realize some of you didn't catch it from the start. It says hope for love. Pray for love. Wish for love, dream for love, but don't put your life on hold waiting for love. And as I've said earlier, I am praying that you'll find love. And when you find love, again, even all these, in fact, these days, we have so many reverends in Sita. Hey, what go to what work on a wedding? Marriage certificates, what our pair, Buenos Aires, but the point I'm making today is, don't stop your life because you are looking for love. Some of you are even wasting money looking for love. You keep dating people, taking them for coffee. <laughs> Every end month, na end a date. Mapesa inaisha tu. Hiyo pesa hata ungeweka kwa shares. <laughs> Unless you are being led of God. Let me just try. Maybe this one will work. My sister, <laughs> it might not work. Unless the Lord is leading you. Stop wasting your money. Move forward. But I'm praying you find love. So I have said three things plus three things. So let me finish with another three things. Then I'm out of here. I think I'll get out of your way. Number seven. Six. 
Seriously. Number six, I didn't see it. I said what? That was number five or number six? Keep moving. Keep moving forward this number? Oh. So, then you are lucky. I may not say nine things. Let me add another one. Grow up and remain focused. Grow up. <laughs> this is like the other one. Singlehood is not a license to childishness and irresponsibility. <laughs> you can't be 38 and keep behaving like you're 18 and pray for, to flourish. You see, if I'm a man searching and I'm 40, okay, let me come closer so that you can connect. Hallelujah. This house, sometimes I talk, you know. I want to connect. If I'm a man at 40 and searching for a wife, Chances are I will not be looking for an 18-year-old. <laughs> and I'm not looking for a 20-year-old. I'm looking for a 30 years plus. And now when I look at the 30 year plus and you're behaving like you're an 18 year plus, 18 years, what shall I do? Advise me what to do. I move on. <laughs> I move forward. So let me speak this, particularly for those of you who are searching. Please also as you, as you, as you are searching uh, or you are feeling you need to be found, please walk around like uh, your wife material or a husband material. Don't just be walking around and, and sisters are looking at you and now even this one, <laughs> if this one got married, you know, which kind of husband will he make? <laughs> because these sisters are also looking not just for a man. They are looking for a husband, a good husband for that matter. And my sister is saying a priest. Yes. So if she is looking for a priest and you show up, you can't even tell what John 3.16 says. <laughs> <laughs> Will she say yes to you? Utanunua kahawa, ununue kuku, Upeleke wapi? Eh, utakula uta tusikienda. Lakini utapata. Because they are also not just looking for a man. It's those who are desperate. You, you try those who are desperate, and those desperate ones are not here. <laughs> those desperate ones are out there on the streets, in the clubs. Those ones you will find. But the ones who are looking for a priest, <laughs> my brother, you better know your Bible well. Otherwise, <laughs> Are we together? Am I speaking to someone? Yes. Grow up. At whatever age, please leave your age. When, when I look at you, let me know you are, you, you are presenting yourself like a woman who is 40 years plus, 50 years plus, who is 20 years plus, who is 30 years plus. Please, 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 please grow up. Mm -mm, you didn't hear me well. Grow up. We all know. The looks and questions you have to bear in our African context. Even in church, after the magical 30 years, I don't know what's wrong with this 30. <laughs> By the way, who created this 30? Where did it come from? <laughs> yeah? You know, you may have just crossed that, but you can stop that negativity 
and discouragement by focusing on accomplishing the purposes of God regardless. And you are growing up. Hallelujah. So when we see you, we don't see you for your age. We see you by what you are accomplishing, how you are growing. And I can tell you, you will flourish and flourish and flourish and succeed and prosper. Whether you get married or you don't get married, it shall be well done, faithful servant. Praise be to God. Too many girls today, someone said, rush into relationships because of the fear of being single. Then start making compromises and losing their identity. Don't do that. Grow, grow, grow. You reach to a level where you're like, hey, okay. You know when you're 18, you say something and you break. Now, you have had so many things. You can even look at someone and say, I have had that before. <laughs> are we together? And you're not being proud. You are just being truthful. Please don't be proud because pride is sin. But just be truthful. Ukweli sa zingine unaumiza. Useme tu na itakuwa sawa. So is it number seven or number eight? Seven and I finish with number nine or number eight. Don't entertain the fear of failure. Don't entertain the fear of failure, worry, or guilt. Failure only arises when you have no result to learn from. And so whatever you have gone through situations and you have failed, you have learned something. Take it as an experience to take you to another level. Do not entertain the fear of failure. And allow me sometimes to say this, Some, sometimes I hear people say, marriage doesn't work these days. And because people have told you those of us in marriage are suffering. There are people who are suffering in marriage, but there are those of us who are also enjoying in marriage. So don't fear that, no, maybe I, I you know, my friend, we were together in campus, you know, she got married, oh, he got married, now they are separated, now they are divorced, now me, I don't want to try it, I think this thing doesn't work. It works. Don't fear. In fact, you need to try it. And with God, remember, number point number one, to know God and know what? What he expects of you and do it. When you know God and trust in God, ladies and gentlemen, you will succeed. And do not entertain the fear of failure. Matthew 6.31. I know you know this, those of you who are priests. <laughs> so do not worry, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? For the backends run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows what you need them, that you need them. Verse 33. I think that one is in memory, right? But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things shall be added. So part of the story for you as single people is to get to a point and say, you know what? I'll not fear. I'll not worry. I will not, I will live my life in accordance to what God expects me to be. Don't feel guilty about your status. You know if you have done your best, but somehow you still find yourself here. Do not make it feel like you are guilty about it. And do not become desperate. I think I've repeated this again and again. I don't know why. <laughs> do not become desperate because desperation is a sure way to disaster. It's a sure way to disaster. Finally, is it number eight or number nine? Be diligent and prove yourself. Be diligent and prove yourself. The society out here, as I said, as I started, at some point we never gave regard to single people. Not just single ladies, but even single men. 
But with time now, even the community out there is realizing that women, single women, and even bachelors can still be entrusted even with positions of leadership, and they're actually doing very well. Praise be to God. So be diligent. And I can tell you, the community now has changed. So the problem is you. When I say that, the church has changed. If you do not prosper, the problem is you. You see, even now we have given you a forum. When I say that, I want to assume that now we are not going to pay a bus. So we are paying a bus. We can go there. Imagine, we are going to pay a bus. Now, if you are doing it, imagine that Kanisa in area is giving you opportunity. So, if you do not drive, will you blame Pastor Mulunda? Oh, Pastor Mulunda, I go to Pelekangi out. Oh, I will let her out. When I say that, Pastor Sarah has come with a whole bus from Nakuru. How many of you are going? I will let her out. But if you are not going to drive, but if you are not going to drive, it is effort to drive. China la bwana libarikiwe. Yeah. Unaweza wengine wamechilipia kwenda kujivinjari mahali pabaya. Wewe umewaleta mahali pazuri, mahali wanaweza mingle 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 with the right people. Please be diligent and prove yourself. If you prove yourself no one will ask you whether you are single. People even the society now is looking for real leaders. They are not looking for people who have wives and have husbands. Hallelujah. Did you know those are from Kericho? And in the neighborhood, Bomates, who is the woman representative? How old is Toto? Does she have a husband? Eh? I go single. When was this then? Now we are going to have. Oh, you know, I'm single. I love tried, but I'm single. Man, be diligent, prove yourself, and even the society will give you a position, the church will give you room, and God has already given you a seal of prosperity. You must rise up and say, I am going to be me. I am going to do this. Irregardless, I will do it. Be yourself, and you will thrive. Success is not going to be given to you. You must work for it. I finish by asking you this question. How are you using your endowment? The things that God has given to you. Again, I said God has given you money. God has given you position. God has given you stature. You, some of you have gone to the university. You have done so much things. People respect you. Some of you are even the first ones to get a degree in your clan, in your village. They respect you. Use that. Stand up. Be counted in this season. And when the men, husbands, and wives come, when the final day comes, none of us will be ashamed. How are you using your gifting? Allow me to finish by a tribute that was given by a single man in the Bible. A single man called Paul. After he had lived and worked and served God, as a single person, he finishes his journey in the book of Second Timothy, chapter four, verse six to eight. That's when Paul is giving a self tribute. I think Paul realized, like it's our time, being single. Maybe after he had died, perhaps there will be no one to write his tribute. <laughs> so Paul actually writes his own tribute. In Second Timothy chapter four, can you can you move there because then that's where I'm finishing. He says, "For I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time has come for my departure." Verse seven says, "For the priest, you also know that I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Now." There is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous Church, will award to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for His appearing. 
This is a self-evaluation for a senior single. Paul, the apostle. And that's a question you need to ask yourself. And that is what God is expecting of each and every one of us who is listening to me today. That when you have lived your life, will you come to a point and say like Paul, I have fought a good fight. I have finished the rest and I have kept the faith. Praise be to God. And then he says, now there's a crown of righteousness. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want to encourage you again. When we get to heaven, the crown shall be given. Not according to marital status, but according to faithfulness and fruitfulness in the life we lived here on earth. Faithfulness, fruitfulness of the life you lived here on earth. That is what needs to be driving us. And therefore, allow me, as I come to a close of this, to ask, if Paul had no excuses to throw around, why should we throw away, throw around excuses for why we're not serving God? He could have, you know, he could account for all his life and ministry. So are we being expected to account for the time, the resources that God has given to us. Paul was so sure of his eternal inheritance. I pray that each and every one of us here will be sure about our inheritance in God. And I conclude, whether you are single by choice or by default, whether you are single, settled, satisfied, or single and searching, God does not expect anything less from you. You are made for God, for a purpose, and God expects you to fulfill that purpose in this season, and much more, actually this season. Ask those of us who are married, sometimes we really suffer. You want to go to a mission, you know, I'm toto ni mgonjwa, and I say that, hey, una rude. Where was I, some of you who are really single, single, unafunga tu nyumba unaenda. Una mtu anakulisa, when are you coming? Yeah. So actually, if God was to ask to charge us in accordance with the time we have spent for God, you will be charged more harshly because you had more time, more resources, more opportunities to serve God than those who have wives to take care, <laughs> husbands, especially he troubles them husbands, and those who have children to pay fees for and many other things. God is looking at you and he wants you to flourish, to prosper and succeed in this season and the seasons to come. God bless you. Amen. Amen.